What's up guys, my name is Julian, your solar expert, and today I have a really exciting video. I actually came all the way out to Florida to talk to Mike Patterson here. Um, he is a battery expert, in my opinion, probably the most knowledgeable solar professional um, on battery specifically. And part of the reason is because, um, you know, being out here in Florida, you uh, have been dealing with this a lot more. A lot of outages. In California, with net metering 2.0, we haven't really needed batteries except for if you are you know in need of that backup which is really only like less than 10 percent of people sure and so because nem 3.0 is coming i really wanted to make a video uh with you specifically um to you know help everyone kind of understand you know what how these batteries work because this is probably the most people are very confused right it's one of the most commonly confused topics um, when it comes to going solar i think most people you know, they, they, can, they can understand the solar, you know, mm -hmm. this is a kilowatt hour, you know, and this is how many kilowatt hours I need, but the batteries is much more complex. And yep. so I wanted to make a video with the expert, guys, I'm telling you, this is like, if you call me and, and, and you're anywhere in the United States um, and you wanna work, you know, with a battery expert, Mike is the guy that, you know, you'll be working with. He's uh, on my team now and I'm super excited about it. So with that being said, Mike, I just wanna give you kind of the opportunity to share who you are and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah, uh, first of all, welcome to Florida. Thank you, um, nice, it's hot. Nice winter day here. <laughs> uh, I'm Mike Patterson. Uh, I'm a former special operations fire engineer um, and my journey into solar and battery specifically just started as a customer. Um, I was shopping around. I had a house that was very, very outage prone, um, whether that was our afternoon thunderstorms, whether it was hurricanes or, or even just brownouts as people keep moving here. Uh, and you know, I needed some sort of backup in case I was deployed with my job or something like that. And uh, we really don't have gas here, so that kind of led me to batteries. So uh, I was shopping around, got dozens of quotes, and everybody told me something different. Uh, nothing added up. So yep. uh, I basically had to go in and, and figure it out and learn it myself. Um, and thankfully, that engineering background uh, came in to um, be very beneficial there. I was able to dive into the actual spec sheets and. Uh, actually talked to some of the engineers at the battery manufacturing uh, uh, plants and so on uh, and really learned the the technical side of the material and, and um, got started from there and since then uh, have grown into the industry we've done a, a lot of battery projects that's um, been very beneficial here in Florida you know unfortunately we had two big hurricanes this year and uh, on the bright side I had dozens of customers who would have been days or weeks without power that were in their houses comfortable, their their air conditioning worked, their refrigerator stayed cold, and uh, they were safe and comfortable. And that was that's what it's all about. You see, out out in Florida, you know, it, it's if your battery system is not sufficiently going to work the way that it's been explained to you, you're in for a pretty nasty surprise. Oh, yeah. Out in California, yes, there are some outages, and and yes, it's it's kind of annoying, but it's more of a nuisance, right? You know, maybe out for a few hours, and then you know, PG and E figures it out and, and they get you back on. So, but, but you know, a hurricane scenario or something like that is much, much worse. So because, you know, they have to have their, their system set up, you know, uh, much more resilient, I would say. Um, I think there's a lot of knowledge that's gonna come from, you know, Florida. It's gonna come to California yeah, as sure. we enter, you know, a period where, you know, the electric vehicles are coming online. The grid is not ready, right? I mean already they're crashing the grid during peak hours you yep. know during demand times yep. sometimes i mean and and only a very small percentage of people like have these these evs they're trying to push people off gas yep. um you know just in general like everyone's converting yep. to, to electric so um the grid's not ready for it nope. and you know we need to basically create our own microgrids um our own self-sufficient energy production sites yep. that actually work and right now especially in like i said in m2.0 we haven't really needed to have that yep. um, it's just a simple grid tied system so um, okay so uh, with that being said um, what are a few things that are like really different about the Florida market versus California because I think most of my viewers probably are familiar with you know the California mm -hmm. market they've, they've heard my net metering metering videos um, they understand that it's like a retail value credit at yep. least under 2.0 so so what, what, how, how does the market differ in Florida? Sure, so the, the biggest thing is electricity here is a whole lot cheaper, uh, a lot cheaper. Yeah. Uh, I have the most expensive utility. We're about 17 cents a kilowatt hour flat throughout the day. It's about uh, double. Yeah. Where we're uh, in California. I, I, yeah, and, and that's most expensive in the state of Florida. Now, granted, uh, we're gonna be up about 40% year over year by the end of the year, so 
it, it's going up quickly as, as like I said people keep moving here they have to build more plants and so on uh, but for us investing in batteries is an investment in security it's yeah you know we're worried about storms we're worried about outages we want to stay in our house and not evacuate we don't want to lose hundreds of dollars of food in the refrigerator whatever it might be um, and generators are not really a great option here because if you've seen on the news when whenever they think a storm's coming everyone rushes up to the gas station and buys us all the gas they have uh, and we don't have natural gas lines in most places and uh, you know my house that I, I bought has a generac that came with it and it has a 500 gallon propane tank and that's good for about four or five days um, after Hurricane Ian, there were plenty of people without electricity for weeks. Um, so what do you do? I mean, I, after four or five days, that Generac is just an expensive paperweight. Um, you know, whereas we get the storm, yeah, it's, it's nasty for a day or two. But then, you know, after that, it looks like this. Nice blue skies. It takes all the weather with it. So wouldn't it be great if you could make your own fuel, keep your house going? Um, so, you know, really, when we do batteries, we're, we're pretty much completely backup focused. We're, we're concerned about that disaster uh, setting. I think going into California, we have to have um, two focuses. You know, you mentioned that the grid is getting more unreliable and, and backup might become a bigger issue than people currently think about. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, especially I, 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 I think it is going to become a lot more Oh, without a doubt. Unreliable. I mean, like yeah. you said, electric vehicles, so you, uh, a Ford Lightning has the battery that's 13, si 13 times the battery that, that we start out with. Yeah. Um, just charge that one time. I yeah. think in 60 miles, that uses what a Florida house uses in a day. Yeah. <laughs> so a grid that's already taxed, how is it going to absorb that? Now you take away gas stoves, gas heaters, gas water heaters, gas pool heaters, those types of things. The electricity has to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. and, and right now, I think they're behind the eight ball on that. Yeah. So it's going to get less reliable. There is going to be a backup component. Uh, but at the same time, we're also in California going to have to use batteries on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Here for most of my customers, because the major utilities by law have to give you one-to-one -one net metering. And, and like I said, it's a flat. There, there is no time of use. So so, so which utilities in Florida? Uh, that's one Duke, one? Tico, and FPL. So uh, okay. Duke, Tampa Electric, and Florida Power and Light okay. are required by law. They're the investor-owned utilities. Um, some of the co-ops will do it voluntarily. Some of the co-ops do not. They're kind of a free-for-all. So what would you what would you say for people in one of those three utilities that they're they're like you know what if a hurricane's coming I'm just gonna drive north I don't need the backup well batteries aren't for everyone so do you think so do, what is the average payback period for just a grid tied solar system in Florida under one of those utilities with sure. the one to one net meter yeah so uh, without batteries the goal and and most people I'd say almost everybody here finances their system. Okay. Um, that the most people have the mindset of, I want to bill swap with immediate savings. Um, it, it's a little different, I think, in California. People tend to be a little bit more investor-focused uh, mindset. Um, they tend to be thinking about more of, okay, the system will be paid off in X amount of years, and after that, it's free. Um, here, we're typically looking at a finance scenario, and they want to save immediately. Um, so Duke, that's the most expensive utility here. It, it's pretty easy in most situations to get you immediate savings in that sense. Okay. Um, Tico's pretty easy. FPL is, is cheaper, so you know it's not as quick uh, or not as drastic of savings, but as long as it's a good layout and you've got a decent usage, we can usually get you pretty good savings. The problem is when we slap those batteries on, best case scenario, we're trading your savings for security. Mm -hmm. um, but in a lot of cases, you're actually investing. You're paying more than you're currently paying for your electric bill but you're gaining that capability of not having to worry about the outages. Okay. And and, and if someone were just to pay cash mm -hmm. for a grid tied solar only, yeah. I, do, up around where would, I mean, I know every system of course is, is different, but. Usually about six to eight years um, from what I've seen oh, for cash. It's it, fast. Yeah, it, it really depends. Um, you know, what does your roof look like? Yeah. Um, you know, if we've got a nice wide open south facing roof, that's a shingle roof, it's in good condition, um, where we can do one, perfect array that's going to be a much quicker payoff than you've got a tile roof and a very complex roof where, where the panels are all over the place and even worse sometimes you know you'll have some people who the panels all have to go on the north side for aesthetics or or mm -hmm. just for the layout of their roof and, yeah. and that's going to make the system more expensive it's going to uh, slow down your payback 